It's pretty fucking cool. And that's not it. We got the ride the lightning. You already know. Welcome back to the channel, guys. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com, where I help you design smarter, not harder. And today I'm gonna walk you through the process of how I design official merchandise for Metallica. But first, let me play a little something for y'all. So how did I even get into contact with Metallica in the first place? Well, I was lucky enough to be introduced to this guy and that guy introduced me to another guy and uh, that's pretty much it. So one of those guys is an art director for Merch Traffic, which is a subsidiary of Live Nation, the entertainment company. And we did a few projects together. We did a uh, tool and some other ones. And later on, they hit me up to do Metallica, which, you know, obviously I could not miss. Uh, huge Metallica fan, big whiskey in the jar. <laughs> But uh, let's go over what they uh, they sent me really quickly on the email. Okay, so obviously I can't show everything, but essentially they told me that they were looking to reinvent some of their other classic album artwork. So pretty much use only their album covers and sort of reimagine them. So as you can see here, extremely simple brief. They pretty much just said we need to reinvent their album artwork and sent some inspo as well as what kind of style to think of. So they said Made Worn Style, which is a great brand that this email actually introduced me to and I take a lot of inspiration from them now so definitely check that out um, but yeah vintage graphics no distress to the blanks um, they mentioned sketches or cartoons but I didn't really get into that um, and it'll only be on t-shirts and hoodies they also sent me a few pieces of my own artwork um, that they thought could relate to this project just so I could get a better idea of you know what kind of graphics I'm supposed to make so that definitely helped now I made a ton of graphics for these guys probably around 20 maybe even more designs total but they only ended up using about six these are the designs that were approved for tour so I'll go over two to three of the approved designs and then I'll try and go over one or two of the unapproved designs which I really really liked I thought some of it was my best work um, so yeah sort of unfortunate it didn't get through the process but obviously a huge win for me that I got anything through and in the end I really really liked what we came up with and what actually got printed on these shirts so huge massive W for me now I love to go over everything but we only have so much time so let's start out with my absolute favorite of the bunch the master of puppets design so if you're familiar with me like at all you know I had to put my signature spin on this cover and what better way to do that than by using the depth tone template which if you don't know that's one of the Photoshop templates that I sell to create a vintage halftone look on your designs. It's a really neat tool and also Metallica approved. So let's check it out. This is the original depth tone file for the design. You might already know how the template works, but right off the bat, we've got our three colors in the design, which are split into the highlights, the midtones, and the shadows. And of course, you can respectively change each of the pretty much relative intensities of all these tonal channels within the design. So the shadows, I can change the threshold value of, as well as the midtones, and of course, the highlights. So these are the colors and the combinations of values for those highlights, midtones, and shadows that I ended up going with for the final design that I sent off to print. So using this template is how I got this really cool grainy sort of Xeroxy half one effect on this album cover. But of course, there's still a little compositing and tweaking going on within the actual cover itself. And all of these tonal groups here, the highlights, midtones, and shadows are pretty much affecting or dithering this artwork smart object down here and inside of the smart object is where i composited the actual design so let's go and take a look at that i'll double click on the smart object here all right so right off the bat i know what you're thinking this kind of looks like shit um <laughs> which is kind of the beauty of depth tone obviously uh this is not what the final product is going to look like this is just where you composite your artwork um so that we can get the final effect on it which you see here so in this composite or in this smart object we have pretty much three things going on we have the dither pattern which is one of three actually in this depth tone in the original depth tone there is just grain and half tone but i wanted to add another pattern here because i liked how this one looked which i'll get into later there's also this textures group which is just adding some texture on top of the design and there's also some more textures embedding in the actual composite of this which is the third group here so all of this down here this is the actual composite so i'll just scroll through this and show you a little bit how i went about making this so the first thing i'm going to do actually is turn on this threshold adjustment layer up here and this is just going to pretty much give us an idea more of an idea of what this design is going to look like once it's actually transferred into the depth of the template so once it has that effect on it you can't really tell much from obviously from the uh, 
raw composite look here, but once we put that threshold on it, we get a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. So the first thing in this composite group is actually the first version of this design that I had made. What you're seeing right now, or what you saw, is a revision, actually. So I'll show you right now what the first concept I came up with was. All right, check this out. This is pretty damn cool, right? So I had this, this dog tag in here, which I sort of embossed the Metallica logo and even the cross plus the soldier helmet on there too, which I thought was a banger idea. I really liked that, but unfortunately they did not. So they told me to take out the, the dog tag here and just leave the album cover, which is understandable, you know, the just trying to reimagine pretty much just the cover but you know i really really like this idea a little sad it got scrapped so yeah if i turn on that dog tag layer you could see the remains of what was but so the final design ended up not using the dog tag it's actually pretty much just the album cover with some tweaks and adjustments down here let me show you exactly what i did so i'll go through each layer here let me just turn all these off actually and get down to the bare cover the actual original cover is this which looks really bad let me turn the threshold off so this is the original cover pretty much obviously you've seen this doesn't look bad right now but once you turn the threshold on you kind of lose a lot of detail and once you pretty much do any dithering on this and with a lot of images this happens is that you lose a lot of detail in either the shadows or the highlights so what i like to do is use a little adjustment up here called shadows and highlights which is an image mode or image adjustments shadows and highlights and from there you can pretty much individually tweak the, the levels of the shadows and highlights of the image and bring more detail out of that out of the image so that's what i did you can see here there's a duplicate of that where I pretty much just use that filter to get some more detail out of that cover. And then I just did some other adjustments like taking away that big text at the bottom, brightening up some parts over here like the grass and stuff. I wanted to I wanted it to show a little more and fill out more of the composition. So again, this would be the original cover and then after the shadows and highlights adjustments and some other things like brightening up certain pieces of the image this is where we ended up next up i tried to brighten up the little piece of negative space here i thought there would be enough detail in the original album cover to do so but there ended up not being much so i couldn't really bring any detail out of this so i had to drag in my own image of i think it was like a stormy cloud stormy clouds or something like that and i just dragged that in and put it in that empty space you can see right here let me turn the, the threshold off it's just an image of some stormy clouds that i added in here and blended it a little bit so that it only affects this part of the composite then there's also this tiny levels adjustment here which just goes to bring some more detail and brighten up the helmet on this cross right here next up we just have the text which is just i just took the uh text from the original album cover that was down here made it smaller and also what is that right justified it whatever that means whatever that is just put it to the right and justified it to that line on the right and believe it or not that actually took me a, a while to figure out because i instinctually wanted to put it how it was kind of centered on the bottom there but it just looked so off and i think i ended up putting it down here by accident and i was like yeah, that kind of looks good so so i kept it and next up we have this black fill layer here which is just black color fill and i layer masked in some parts of the composite that were just details that were unnecessary so you see if i turn that off it's just things here like that you know don't need to be in the design sort of things that look like errors so i just masked them out with this black fill on top of everything and on top of all that just some more texture to give this more life so in here i have my warm plastic salt textures available on my website and i also have a few of the other textures in here such as this vintage soft grunge from further mo and then also just some quick levels adjustments in here to bring it all together and that's really pretty much it real simple composite obviously most of the work is being done by depth tone and the effect that it makes out of the artwork and obviously this really cool dither pattern that i stumbled upon so basically what's going on here is i have this sort of 50 percent gray pattern that has sort of like ink dots on it it's sort of similar to a diffusion pattern so you can see it if i zoom in real close here that's just pretty much overlaid onto the image and that way when you do any thresholding or any effect on it it pretty much dithers the image according to that so it's the same deal pretty much as like grain or halftone just a different pattern being used i might add that or other patterns that i come up with as like a, a dlc pack for depth tone or something but i do have another or a, another set of patterns including grain halftone dither and all that in my my product vintone which is a great product that i actually used for some of the metallica designs as well which i'll try to showcase in this video too but yeah so i chose to dither this image with this cool diffusion looking ink dots pattern and that brought me here just for sake of actually i'm just curious i want to see what this looks like with the grain pattern in here so let me just turn that on maybe make it a little smaller we'll do, we'll do 50. i'll save the smart object okay yeah like i expected pretty similar result 
Just a little more stochastic, obviously, and sort of more like a Xerox grain, a little more chaotic. But yeah, pretty much looks the same. Also a really cool result here. I just kind of liked how the diffusion ink dots looked for this specific design. If you were curious, here's what the halftone pattern would look like. Pretty similar result, obviously just a different, uh, different texture to it, but obviously still really cool. And that is, of course, the really cool thing about depth tone is that you can get all these different, but similar cool effects and textures on your artwork simply by turning on and off some layers. Next up, let's go over And Justice For All. Great, great album and really love doing this design because I had a little more creative expression with it. As you can see, obviously I had to use the album cover, but I can move some more things around and get a little more creative with it. So same deal here again with Depth Tone, just using some different colors here. We got the shadows. Shadows are actually the same color from the Master Puppets design, but the midtones I'm using an orange and the highlights I'm using a yellow. And I got this, this really cool sort of contrasty, vibrant effect on it. And I really like that. So I kept these colors. Again, I was able to play with the individual intensities of these color groups here to, you know, match them how I wanted to the design and create a nice sort of evenly lit and balanced composition. So depth tone template doing a lot of the heavy lifting here. Let's go ahead and look at the composite by opening up the smart object down here. And pretty much same thing here. So we have the dither pattern going on up here. We have the textures that are pretty much adding some more textures to the artwork. And of course, as you can see, if I turn these off, we still have some more textures going on, which are embedded in the composite group down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through all these layers for you. Let me just turn all these off. So we can get down to the bare bones, which is the album cover. So this is, well, sort of like half of it. As you can see here, I did a lot of work in this. Actually, I did a ton of work to try and get the, the statue separated from the album cover, which was a tough, tough job because she is so close in tone and value to the, the background. So I couldn't like select subject or anything. I had to go in and pen tool it and boy, did that hurt me. So there's also these, these falling pieces of money down here, these dollars, which I had to individually go in for. But that's, you know, another story. Fun time, pen tooling. I eventually got the, the layer mask or the selection out of this. So I have the statue separated from the background. So you can see that here. Here is the statue, obviously. And then I added in some of that background, but I did fade it out as you saw in the original design. So you can see this layer mask. I kind of painted in the areas where I wanted to keep it. And I faded mostly the top out and the edges around here. And I also did a levels adjustment to bring out some more detail in areas that I thought needed it. There's also this outline going on around the statue. So I'll open that group up. And that's just a drop shadow on the on pretty much the, a mask of the statue. So if I turn that off, you can see it's pretty much just a stroke or an outline on the actual statue, just so I can create some depth and separate it a little bit from the background. Now I also masked out these ropes over here. So I can individually color them. That was actually, I did that for another design, which is, which was unapproved, but it also kind of helped me here. So I could individually tweak the brightness of the ropes, which didn't end up mattering that much, but it was like a clutch little thing that sort of helped that I could individually tweak the ropes if I needed to. Now, obviously this is a little too much background showing still. So I did some blocking out. That's what this group is right here. So I pretty much just slapped a ton of textures on this. So these are actually, I don't know what they're from. They're one of millions of textures in my folders. So I just drag those in here and set them to multiply to pretty much mask out some of the rest of the background. And I also added some black color fills here and masked those in to mask out again, more parts of the background. I also think I used yeah, a grunge brush here in the mask, sort of like a paintbrush so that I wasn't like a soft fade or anything. I kind of, you know, looked more of like a grungy fade out towards the bottom. I thought that was cool. And then right here I have the and justice for all text, which I singled out and put a little layer style on. Let me go down here. So here's the text. It's just black text. And then to separate it a bit from the rest or from the background, I added a little drop shadow here. If I zoom in, there's this white drop shadow going on. Very simple layer style just has it spread all the way at 100 distance at eight and it's a little white drop shadow i also layer masked the rope out to be in front of the text here which was obviously just to add some more depth into the composition now up here we have the big metallica logo so if i turn this layer on you see the beautiful metallica logo one of my favorite band logos of all time which is another one of the reasons i was super excited to work on this project besides for of course it being metallica but anyway so in this folder i have the metallica logo and i just have some textures clipped to it i have a layer style on the actual logo so the layer style is again very very simple i think it's just yeah two three drop shadows i don't even know why it's three it could just be two so we have the black drop shadow here that first one that we see which is sort of like an invert of the white drop shadow down here so we have the white text black drop shadow and just to add a little more depth i added another drop shadow in here okay actually the second one is that little black drop shadow this one up here is just i don't know i just left it on i guess but the 
bottom one down here is the white drop shadow, which is the exact same settings as this one, just duplicated, and I made it white, and then changed the distance. The most important thing about these hard drop shadows is just to keep the spread at 100. Really cool layer style. I use things like this all the time just to add some more depth and more interest to the composition. And then like I said, I clipped a texture on here just to give it more life. And I also put this in a group and layer masked out the statue here so that if I wanted to move it behind like her hand or something, I could do that. And I did do that, but they, they revised it and they wanted me to put it up here, which I guess is just for more visibility on the logo. But compositionally, I thought this looked a little bit cooler, but it ended up, we ended up putting it up here. Um, and then on top of this, I just have some more textures. So I'm, I'm masking it out in the places that could use more texture. So down here, I masked it out a little bit. I think I just did this too, because it was too bright down here, but I didn't want to, again, use a soft fade. I wanted more of a grungy fade out. So I just masked some textures to this area of the back background and that way we can fade it out in more of an interesting manner and then we have this levels adjustment here which i'm assuming just quick little brightness adjustment and that is pretty much it like i said very simple stuff these are very simple compositions obviously the main interest of the graphics is the beautiful album covers that i was supplied with and also the depth tone template great template one of my favorite things i've ever made and i've used it on pretty much like all big name projects i've been involved with so yeah this is the final result super super cool stuff also, like I said earlier, when I'm compositing this stuff, I usually have a threshold on top just so I can see really what's going on or how it will look once it's actually dithered using the template. So yeah, that's a nice little trick if you have depth tone, you could just throw a threshold on top of there in the artwork small object and that'll help you see pretty much how it's going to look in the final depth tone template. All right, now let's go over one of the unapproved designs and you know we got to do the trifecta. So I've got the Ride the Lightning album cover design here and this one was actually unapproved, which I can 100% see why, but I really, really like this one. However, if I were to guess why I didn't go through, it's probably because I'm not using the chair imagery from the album and also it's kind of more of a grotesque take on the on the cover and the the album. <laughs> So obviously we have this guy in an electric chair here and he's got headphones on. Pretty sick concept, I will say. I really like it, I'm proud of this one. So clearly this guy is fucking jamming to Metallica while on death row, cool stuff. So yeah, let's get into the actual composition of this. So first things first, we have this texture group all the way up top. This just contains some of my warm plastic salt textures, which I use on like every design, guys. If you want these textures, these are available on my website, duronsupply.com. Like I said, I use them on everything, they're great. They're actual real warm plastic salt textures. So yeah, go pick those up if you feel you need them. I use them in this design. I felt they really added some life to it. So I use these two textures. If I turn them on and off, you can see just how much of a difference that makes. It really gives it that warm feel. Obviously, that's more of a taste thing. Some people don't like it. I really, really like it. So I kept these textures on here. I'll turn those off for now just for clarity. Let's get into the actual composition of this. So I'll start from the bottom here. I'll turn all of this off. And we're going to start out on the, the Metallica logo, the classic, just a fucking absolutely banger rendition of the logo here with this, this desert chrome effect that was on the Ride the Lightning album cover. Just so gorgeous. I could stare at it all day. So what I did here was just take the original album cover, which you can see here, and completely just I masked out the, the logo. I think I used a soft brush here. It was a very easy task. Yeah, so I just took a soft brush and you know brushed over the logo here, masked it out. And I also think I included some of the lightning from the original cover in here. So I had a duplicate layer underneath where I also masked in some of the lightning. So yeah, we've got the Metallica logo here. And then I didn't want to use the, the actual chair and the cloudy background from the, the cover just because I felt it wasn't it wasn't doing too much for me. I mean, I love this cover, but for a t-shirt design, I've already seen this on t-shirts. I wanted something new, something more fresh, something more intense. So I added this this group right here, which you can see, I, I turned this on. It looks like a mess without the, the adjustments and everything on there. So just for sake of clarity and, and you seeing this not look like a pile of shit, I'm gonna turn on some of these adjustments here so we can see what it, it might look like towards the end of the design. So yeah, I've got this, this little lightning storm here. Really, really cool effect. When I actually sourced these, they look pretty cool. I've never seen lightning like this. That's why I knew I had to use it when I saw this, this image on Pinterest, actually. So I'll show you that. It's actually two images I used. This image that I got from Google, extremely low quality, you can see here, but it just had some really nice clouds in the background. So I masked those in and I maybe even blurred it there so that you can't see how low quality it was. But yeah, I masked some of these clouds in because I really thought they looked nice. Again, image from Google. Don't really need to find any special place. And I found this really cool artwork on Pinterest. You might have seen this on Pinterest. I don't know where I got it. It was just on my fucking home feed. And I was like, that lightning needs to be used. That is so sick. So I dragged this into my composition and I layer masked out some of the lightning here. So I got this little cool 
half of a bolt in this go around and then I duplicated it again, got this bigger bolt and I probably flipped it or something and then did it again, pretty much just rinse and repeat to get the most out of this and try and, what is it? Two pieces of lightning here that I had to take out and make it look like it was more than two pieces of lightning that I stripped out from an image. So yeah, I took those out, duplicated it, flipped it, warped it, pretty much just made it look less like the source from where I got it from. And then obviously there's this huge, ugly, empty space in here, which I actually had this, I had this image in here before I did the lightning. That's why it looks like shit without that. So when I composited the lightning, I actually was doing it around this image. But yeah, I thought this lightning storm was really, really cool. And it was fun to take this image and kind of flip it around and, and make it work like how I needed it to. And also just to grab this the cloud image from Google. It's always fun when you, when you look and search something up on Google and it's like what you need is right there. Every time I search up something like stormy clouds or something, Google just has some banger results. So you really don't need to go anywhere special. All right, now for the, the chair, this guy sitting in the chair, you're probably wondering where the hell I got this from. And I'll tell you, let me take this layer mask off. Where is it? Let me take everything else you can see the full image here so this was an image that i got actually from mid journey so i generated this image using ai i'll try and find the prompt for it and it was probably just i mean it's pretty self-explanatory guy sitting in an electric chair turned away with headphones on and i just generated and generated until i found one that i like i ended up with this one and i dragged that into my composition i have all these adjustments on it obviously so even like this it looked really cool then i had to mask out just the guy here so in this group here what i did was mask out the guy in the chair now that i'm looking at it again actually i see that i i used two of the generations that i got from mid journey on this and i kind of merged them merged them together so that they made one final image i think i liked the head from one image and the chair of another image so I, it looks like i merged them together here but you can see when i turn this off there's clearly another there's something else going on here but yeah really really cool image already i thought it worked very well with the not only the composition in terms of you know visually what i'm looking at but also it just looks fucking sick and it relates to the album cover perfectly and obviously the headphones is the cherry on top Top. just cool concept i thought so that's the basic composite of this and then after that i just did some minor adjustments that's what this folder is right here so i added some star overlays here some more lightning here and there a little bit more glow if i open this we'll see I turn this on and off it's just a little lightning coming out of the headphones here just to really hammer that point in about the headphones and then i also have some star overlays going on here which are actually from album art archive from jack great guy love his stuff go check him out album art archive on instagram or no they're studio triple a studio aaa now they rebranded but yeah go check them out and obviously i got this little lightning here from the album cover that i added in just made it a little more prominent so yeah just some little adjustments to add a little more pizzazz to the design and then i had this levels adjustment just to make the whole thing a little bit darker and then finally i have the ride the lightning text down here which is really really cool i thought adds a lot of depth and really sells the whole design for me. And you might be wondering how I did this. And I'm really excited to tell you, it's super cool. It's this plugin, you might already have it if you've ever done 3D texts in Photoshop with this plugin. It's called, what is it called? iCandy7. So most of the time people would recommend that to you for 3D text. And that's what I got it for originally, but I was playing around with it and there are some options for light. There's one called Lightning. So if you drop some text in here and then go up to that filter and do Lightning, it's gonna generate lightning bolts stemming off of your text, which is super, super cool. So let me hide this top layer here and you'll see down here that it's called electrify, I guess. You'll see that it pretty much just generates lightning coming out of the text. So I did that and then I added a blur duplicate down here just to add some more glow for the, and then I placed the original text on top of all that and added a little drop shadow here to kind of give us some distance from the lightning and add some more depth to the text and the composition. Now I know you're wondering about these adjustments, which are the main thing bringing this whole composition together. So let me go over that for you. So I'll turn all these off and let's start with the first one here the most obvious is a gradient map i love your gradient maps gotta use them so this is just a very simple four point gradient map we have the black for the black blacks obviously the white for the white whites and then in the middle i just have a smooth lilac to kind of tealish blue gradient which i kind of just wanted to keep the original feel of the album cover and just add a little more spice in there with the, the lilac 
So it's a very simple stuff, a pretty obvious choice to make for this design and obviously brings it all together by blending all the colors together. And then on top of that gradient map, I have a few overlays going on here. So if I open up this group, actually, let me show you what it's doing just by zooming in real quick. So we turn this on and off. You can just see it's just adding some more noise and texture to this, which kind of helps when you have some low quality gradients going on. Like if I turn this off and I zoom in over here, it's really not blending well. There's some JPEG compression artifacts. And so I just wanted to put some sort of texture on top of all this to make it more cohesive. Adhesive. So I chose, let me go in here. I chose, I think a diffusion pattern. I'll go one by one. This looks like a, this is actually a, a pattern in my Vintone template. This is a cotton, cotton pattern. It's just a cotton fabric that I actually stole it from one of my mock-ups. So this is just a very slight texture, adds some sort of vertical grain and a vintage shirt look, I guess, obviously because it's cotton. And then on top of that, I have, what is this? This is the same thing. I don't even know what this is anymore. Okay, this is also cotton. So I'm assuming I just put a ton of cotton textures on this to simulate the vintage shirt feel and just obviously to add a more cohesive texture. I probably experimented with a ton of patterns and just chose whatever looked good from a distance. And on top of all this, I have a, I think these are the ink dot textures that I used in the Master of Puppets and the And Justice for All cover. So this is that same pattern that I just put on top of this. And obviously none of this is actually dithering the image. Of course, if I wanted to, I could throw a threshold on top of here. And now this image is dithered according to those patterns, but that's not what I was going for. I just wanted to add a more cohesive texture on top of all this to bring it all together. All right, cool. And then on top of that, I have a hue and saturation layer just to bring some more saturation into this. And this was a little too saturated. So I added a selective color adjustment in here. These are actually, these go hand in hand. I added the hue and saturation because I added the selective color adjustment. So you can see without the hue and saturation, the selective color is way too too thin and desaturated. So I had to add this saturation boost to make up for that. Selective color adjustment here is just using one of my presets that I made. I have a few of these, I'll go through it real quick. I think it's just, most of these don't matter actually because we're using a gradient map. So it's only really affecting the cyans and the blues. So it's actually not even affecting the cyans and the blues. You can see I have nothing set here for the blues and the cyans don't really do much. So what's probably going on is the neutrals adjustment here and maybe the blacks. Yeah, so the neutrals and the blacks here I edited and obviously that's gonna affect any anything that's in the sort of mid-tone range and then blacks in the in the shadow range so i don't know what i did here i just played around until you know i found a setting that looked nice a combination of numbers that looked nice in my eyes that's pretty much what graphic design is right that's what i do all the time i just find a combination of numbers in a adjustment that looks cool so that's what i did here so the blacks here i don't even know if these if this is doing anything i don't think it is yeah so it's really just the neutrals so i just played around here added some tint and played around with the tone and the levels of the mid-tones, I guess. So if I turn that on and off, you can see how that affects the image. And then I added this saturation boost under it to, you know, make the image more saturated and bring more of a punch to the design. And then of course, to really hit it home, gotta slap that texture on there. And boom, that is the, the final design that I made that I submitted. Like I said, unapproved, but fuck it, we ball. I really like this one. It was a good practice piece of nothing else. And I have a ton, a ton of other designs. I wish I could show you and wish I could do a, a review of but obviously I'm limited on time and I don't know if I'm allowed to show all of the designs, but hopefully in a future tutorial or something, we can get to that. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you liked it, like the video. If you like me, subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to check out my website, duronsupply.com for things like depth tone and my warm plastic salt textures, which are now officially Metallica approved. So now you have to. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.